So we're going to begin. Uh, there's going to be tons of time for questions. Actually, most of it's going to be questions and answers, interaction, because if, at the end of this you don't understand, then I didn't do what I'm here to do. Um, and so the only way for us to have confirmation on that, come on in, is for you to confirm it for yourself. Right? That confidence will then bring... I hope everybody here is born in a barn. Come on, it's great. Chords. Um, I turned the heater up. Thank you. You're welcome, John. I really did. Yeah. Have a seat. My name is Ryan Noss. I thought that was a soil sample at first. I'm sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> um, like, honestly, like, where I've got test tubes and stuff. And no, no, it's fine, right? It's like, it's what creates good, strong, healthy, and then she is just eating it like this. And it, sorry, it really did throw me off for a second. But at least I got my name right. My, na my name is Ryan Noss. Uh, the company I own and represent is called We Grow With. It is really about understanding the biological factors of working with God's creation to help us make our job easier because our role is to be stewards. Um, at that point, I've developed different products. Um, some of them are um, trademarked because no one else has them because I came at this not from an industrial agricultural perspective, but a healthy ecosystem perspective. Um, I'm assuming a tremendous amount standing up here about you guys, and so I have questions for you. And as those questions are answered, I'll be able to share stories and experiences from what I do with lots of different people all over the country and the world to try to help you guys understand that you already have the tools because we're part of we're part of it. You know, we have a role. Um, online, there was a. a um, Online for this class, there was a write-up, just a basic outline. We'll go through some of that as well. Um, that's a resource for you to go back to, as well as the website that we have uh, has a smaller educational section to it and product information too, so that you have a reference point at that point, um, as well as contact information. So if you have questions in the future, feel free to call, uh, email, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can to help, help out. So before I continue, I'd like a, a perspective on who's here, right? Um, let's just start out with from what aspects of the world. Do we have any people from outside of the United States joining us today? Ghana. Ghana? You guys like know each other already and everything? That's excellent, right? So we have West Africa, yeah. right? We have West Africa. Where else? Anybody from California? All right, that makes it easier. All right, the western part of the United States. That means everyone else is not from California, correct? Deduction. It works out. I like it. All right, so since you guys are volunteering, I get to ask questions. Where are you from? Um, Venezuela. Ven I'm in Orlando. Okay, so Florida, but from Venezuela. Excellent, sir. Tennessee. Tennessee. Tiny little East Texas. East Texas. Good job. Go California. All right. Wife and I are from Missouri. Missouri. Ghana. You, they already shared. You guys are having to come back to. Come on. Oregon. Where? Oregon. Excellent. Northern Michigan. Northern Michigan. Arizona. Arizona. Texas. Washington. Washington State. Tennessee. Tennessee. Three Nevada. Yes. Still, <laughs> Still got in West Africa. Southern Oregon. Southern Oregon. California, Oregon. Oregon. She's like, I just got here. <laughs> Where are you from, ma'am? California. California. We've got another one. Minnesota. 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 Mm -hmm. Just together. Good. Tennessee. 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 Okay. Utah. Utah. I was born in Jamaica, Colorado. Nice. Washington. Washington. Maine. 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 And that's everybody. Isn't that great? So a little bit ago, you're like, hey, this here is going to share information with generations to come. Yeah, that's only people who look on a website, right? 
You guys are going back to communities, you're going back to places, you're going back to homes. You're going to have whatever interaction with the neighbors and the community down the street. And actually, frankly, I interact with a lot of people driving down a road and seeing something and then pull over to interact and try to help. Um, the issues that most of agriculture is dealing with is the same issues that everyone else is dealing with, but they just don't realize it, right? Clean water, clean air, fertility, right? We, we talk about fertilizers all the time, but it's not about fertilizers, it's about fertility, about the life in the soil. True healthy soil grows. Um, if I just start saying numbers or percentages, I don't know if those make sense to you because I don't have your experiences. At this point, who here feels like they have the largest parcel of land that they steward? And I say steward instead of farm because it's an attitude, but it might be a farm, it might be a ranch, it might be whatever. But at the macro level, do we have anybody here representing more than 10,000 acres or hectares? Okay, 1,000 acres. I'm gonna use acres just because we're in the United States. 100 acres? Yes. Anyone between 100 and 1,000? Where are you guys at? Tennessee. Yeah, but number-wise. 50. Okay. No, but it's your space, right? 100%. Anybody else? Yeah, let's hear it. 480. 480 acres. Space not farmed. Who else is space not farmed, though? Anybody more than 480 acres? Okay. Tracy. <laughs> um, I'd like to postulate just as an attitude, right, that we have the land that we tend to care for, right? But then we also have it all. We live on a sphere, right? I, it's, it's powerful for me to see one individual's good, healthy land management practices. The land and life underground does not care that there's a fence line on the surface. It spreads. It's growing. It's healthy. It's community, right? All of those things. Um, sir, welcome. We'll take a moment. You can find a more comfortable seat. <laughs> Where are you from, Ronald? Texas. Central Texas. Is that all? <laughs> as, as we understand, um, anybody here taking an uh, actual CPR course? Right? Well, it's about living. Yeah, any air breather, honestly. So anybody? Okay. Anybody here actually perform CPR to save a life? Excellent, right? There's a huge difference, right, between learning about it and putting it into practice. This is the same thing that we're applying, but putting it into practice into the soil. We live in an aerobic, air-breathing environment. Ground compaction literally means there's no access for air to pass through. It's dead, right? Soil CPR is really understanding about the biology and life that's in, the, in and amongst us, right? At which point, that biology becomes our focal point. That's what the plants like to work with, not us, right? A lot of people say they don't even have a green thumb, and that's because they don't go hang out with plants. The plants are the ones with those green thumbs. Those are called leaves. Hey, it's good to see you, right? <laughs> It's through photosynthesis that this process of taking sunshine and bringing it down and turning it into carbohydrates or sugars, right? That's the carbon, the carbohydrates, right? Everybody's talking about carbon sequestration, the politics, the this, the that, all this drama connected to it. It's really about working with plants. Those plants are the channel or the funnel that brings it into the soil ecosystem the biology itself is the organic material. That's why it's organic matter. It's what matters. It's the life, okay? So as we as macroorganisms have needs, microorganisms that are very similar to us in 
what are life's requirements, they also have needs. Um, those needs then are translated to how you can work with them and steward that population so that your plant has exactly what it wants to work with. Because by the time the plant's leaves are yellowing, it's not because of a lack of nitrogen on our part, it's because it doesn't have something in the soil that actually will do that job for you. Those are called nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Does that make sense? At that point, if you don't have nitrogen-fixing bacteria in your soil, if you don't have the life form to perform that function, who does? Who's the one that has to perform that function if the plant doesn't have its team in the soil? 100%. 100%. Right? And at that point, we become not the problem but the solution because we're understanding our role in it. So um, I would like to, to have prayer before we get into the rules and roles and all this other stuff that is part of the class. But I really appreciate everyone's time, their interest, the fact that when you leave here, you'll have a different perspective because you'll realize that as the observer, we understand what should be obvious to our service versus being confused and frustrated and overwhelmed and not sure what to do all the time because if it's just alkaline soil, then that's on our shoulders, and that's hard. That's the hard work. Okay. So, prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I am so grateful for this opportunity to share not only the stories and the experiences, but your, your grace upon all of us as we learn how to work better with you and better with this beautiful planet that you have gifted us with. Thank you for giving all of us this opportunity to learn and share with each other so that we may not just have good, good, and very good, but the best that you desire for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, so it is online, but I'll write some of these things as memory aids up front. Um, it's called the role or the rule, but it's really the role of I, the individual, okay? That role of that individual is if I'm cold, somebody else is probably cold too, because we share a lot of these common sensory experiences. If I'm thirsty, somebody's probably thirsty too. If I'm hungry, right, we've ever been on a car ride and somebody goes, I gotta stop and go to the bathroom. Everybody goes to the bathroom. But I thought it was only that one person. Nope. The rule of I, right? I walked into this room. It was cold. I said, you know what? I'm going to be moving around. You're not. I turned up the heater, right? If we're in a situation where we don't understand the role of I, then how will we understand any connection to everything else that is experiencing everything else as well? And then my question for you guys is, does that change with scale? Do I like getting sunburn? No. And I've got all these layers of protection. The microbiology doesn't like being sunburned either. That's called solarization. That's why those dead dirt fields still look dead and dirt, right? Dirt is literally just mineral structure. It's dead. There's no life to it. That is the defining line between soil and dirt. If you have dirt to work with, what do you have to add back? The life. And then what feeds that? The plants, right? And then what nurtures that? You. And if you're working with livestock, they have this middle ground in the rumen and the gut system, which is helping maneuver the manure so you don't have to with a wheelbarrow, right? So the role of I is really a perception of not just not just the individual's responsibility, but it's if you're standing out there and you're anxious, if you're standing out there in your farm and you're not comfortable, maybe the farm's not comfortable either. Whatever ref reflection that is. Right? The second part is called biological literacy. And biological literacy is based in the B, right? Which is times two. It's about making babies. It's the fertility component. Do you want land that has been overworked, underappreciated, covered in toxins, 
or do you want one that's healthy and reproductive? That's the biology. This is what allows for exponential growth. And when we were talking about exponential growth in microbiology, some of these creatures can double their population every 15 minutes. While we've been sitting around, there's now 10 million of them. Okay? So this is where your plant actually, if given the right tools, will grow the population because that's its desire. And it does that through sending information and sugars, food, right, fuel, and information through what are called exudates. Exudates just means, just like when we sweat, it's a oozing out through it, but it's that sugar carbon of photosynthesis. And a plant will send out 60 to 80% some plants of what it pulls in through photosynthesis and pump it right through it into the soil. Cool, right? Simple math, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How many weeks in a year? Good job seeing if you guys are still paying attention, right? That's 8,760 hours. <laughs> Can you see it now? Yes, sir. Excellent. <laughs> Labor is the number one thing I hear most people complain about. I can't get enough help. What else do you want me to do? They're already overwhelmed. They've got harvest. They've got this. They've got something else happening, and it's all based on someone else's need, and I need 200 people here yesterday. Well, cool. It's easier to get the people here if they're not having to do this much labor all year long. This is what the soil ecosystem will do for you, not for free. It has a cost, but that's why it has value, right? But that's what it will perform when we're inside our boxes, warm and cozy and comfortable and enjoying the time, the rest that we need. That's what it's doing for fun. This is like, it is form and function. This is what it wants to do. And if the plant says, hey, I don't need more of this right now, it stops telling that ecosystem, but now I need more zinc. And then it blows up a population of biology that takes minerals and turns it into nutrition. It's called nutrient cycling, right? If you have questions at any point in time, feel free, including if you can't see something. But I'm going to progress through this, assuming that a lot of this stuff is already understood, at least at a baseline level. Okay. After we get out of biological literacy, we transfer to the rule of three. Okay. This is a memory aid used in survival training. And the rule of three is if you don't do this in three seconds, you're dead. If you don't do this in three minutes, you're dead. If you don't do this in three hours, guess what happens next? Three hours, three days, three weeks, three months, three years, right? Three decades, three centuries, right? Three centuries, by the way, is the amount of time that's very similar to a lot of indigenous populations saying to the seventh generation, right? Have, we've set it up. We're not in survival mode at that point. We're thriving, okay? So if you don't do this in three seconds, you're dead. What would that be? Breathe, right? Hey, John, how you doing? Okay, okay, good. All right, breathing. Wrong. Anybody here breathe every three seconds? Right? No way. That, that you lightheaded, you pass out, right? If you don't do this in three seconds, you're dead. If I take a backpack sprayer and I put whatever in it that says all the skulls and crossbones and dead little fish pictures and don't put this near anything that actually you want to keep alive, and I put it out there, how long does it take to kill it? Three seconds. Right here at three seconds is where I'm trying to offer the reality that this is the head start. If you know this ahead of time, then that three seconds, you automatically are fine. If you get rid of the things that kill all the things, then at that point, it's shifted gears. Now you got three minutes to think about how to do it better. Right? And at that point, it goes right back to the rule of eye, which is we're air breathing aerobic creatures. 
right? Just like the biology. Does biology in the soil breathe air? Anybody here ever talk about oxygenation of the soil or wanting to, like, that's what those worms are doing. They're creating air and water passages, right? All of the biology is actually facilitating that for your plants and for your, your ecosystem. If you've killed it, and we go back to the, we have to cut down to the previous level, right? If we have three minutes and now we're uncomfortable, boom, goes to three seconds. This room's filling with smoke, right? You got three minutes, but you're in an immediate uh, survival or safety situation, you should get out, okay? If it goes from three minutes, which is about air, how do you know if your land can breathe? It's kind of a different perspective, but how do you know your land breathes? Based on the productivity of the land. The air is essential, so if the land is productive, it's breathing. Okay, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes the land actually can be shoved so many chemicals that it just mainlines everything and it's yeah. not important. Structure, yeah, aggregation. Mm -hmm. um, what was that? It drains well. Yeah, the, it's the same passage, the air and water passages, exactly. Plus, the drainage actually is part of the biology being there because it's flushing, letting it pass through, and it's holed up, and that's what the aggregation is, the stability in that soil as it percolates through. Here. 100%. That's why you should go hang out with your plants. Agreed, right? What about the morning dew? <sighs> if you breathe on a glass, you see the condensation. This is a respiratory experience. As soon as the sun comes out, it hits an evaporation point. At that point, you're losing your water. A lot of growers in the Central Valley, they'll lose 60% of all the water that they complain they don't have enough of. They lose it to evaporation. Cool. Stop complaining about water then, right? If at the point where your problem is because you don't know how to contain water or retain water, right? We're always talking about retaining water. It's different, right, in, in Mother Nature, right? If you can't do that, then you're going to lose it. That's the old common sense adage of you don't use it, you lose it, right? This interaction of the biology, this respiration, is part of that CPR. This morning, walking around, I literally had a handkerchief in my sandal. Yes, I can talk about my sandals, but, you know, the, the sandals, I'm walking through collecting the morning dew, all right? This dew is filled with protozoa. It's covering all the healthy plants, that's why it's breathing, right? I literally just wipe it down, ring it in, and a little later we'll look at it under the microscope. There will be more life in one drop of this than entire acreage that I've looked at under the microscope, 100%. Like for reals, like scary, right? Okay? Makes sense, though. We put pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, suicides, everything's on the land, <laughs> right? This is where the rule of I comes in. This is where I decide, right? Like you have a choice of where it goes. I've stood with more people next to tractors with them crying because they're going to lose it all. And even people who have everything still have that burden on their heart that they're going to lose it all, right? And so it has lost its joy, which is why the kids don't want to participate in the family business, which is why people are consolidating into massive farms that just some guy sits in his tractor and has tractor therapy for a couple hours. You guys never heard of it called tractor therapy? <laughs> some people are like, yeah, we have. <laughs> no, 100%. Some of these tractors are like little spaceships, air conditioned, GPS, Wi-Fi, this, that, everything, and all he has to do is go like this, right? And sometimes, yeah, exactly, it tracks even, all for efficiency, all right? No, like, it's a different interaction with the land. So, so the fact that we're talking about literally the processes of, of us breathing parallels 
to what's happening in the soil. Being able to go out and collect the biology, I'm gonna teach you guys how to do it at small scale all for free because it's smaller scale. If you work with larger scale, you need help. That's why it costs, right? You're paying for someone else to put it together so you have what you need because it's a larger scale, okay? This took not money, what did it take? And what's the thing we all talk about not having enough of? Bummer. <laughs> but this honestly is part of the process of realizing that on a spiritual level, it's not about the fruit. It's about the roots. And that's where we grow time. Time is a tuber. Right? That's where if you get out of the three minutes... If you get out of three minutes, you get to three hours. You got a little bit of time. Everybody can breathe, right? Three hours is directly connected to exposure, right? The three hours is connected to, it doesn't matter if it's too hot or too cold, it's too much, and you can die of hypothermia or hyper when it's too hot in three hours, okay? How much resistance or stability do you think of that a tiny little microscopic organism has sitting out on a baking hard pan piece of dirt and it's going to have a 12 hour window with intensity between 10 and 2 that's just microwaves everything right it's not going to have much chance right when we get out of three hours we go to three days what's that what do you think three days is? I'm just grateful not everybody here is like talking about food. I've had people be like, every three hours, right? <laughs> three minutes, three minutes, I need to eat something right now, right? <laughs> no, we can wait a little bit, right? So we get from three hours to three days, it's about water. Okay? Thank you, good reminder. So, if it's water, and we water all the time, and we're air breathers, what have some people done to their land? They drowned it. It's dead. Think of a potted plant at your house, right? Anytime that water's coming out the bottom end of it, it's taking all the water-soluble nutrition with it, and it's waterlogged now and it drowned. That's why they have those little pellets in the potting soil mixes. Those are called fertilizers. Those are the chemicals necessary because you've washed out all the life. Okay? It happens the same way at massive scale too. But if you've got good soil structure and the biology there, they don't want to drown. They work that stuff into the soil matrix and this is also another way that soil grows because it's gonna hit whatever hard pan it's at, either base rock level or a plow pan, and at that point, it's gonna have a place where it can't go anymore. Different tools to figure out where on your land that place is, because if it's deep enough, then you don't have to worry about it. And then that's like Larry, who was just here, it's about no-till, right? Just like we don't like being run over with tractors and tillage equipment, the biology doesn't either. I had a gentleman who asked me if he should put some of the biology through a blender. This is a man who owns a major company and is trying to like get product out to the whole world, but he doesn't understand that it's alive, and no, it doesn't want to go through a blender. His response was, well, I want it to be smooth. Okay, but it's dead, right? What's the goal? Our goal is to keep it all alive and to promote that life. Oh. I can see the smile be below your mask even right now. <laughs> My wife tried that one. <laughs> there, there you go. Concrete. Yeah, to make concrete. Um, when that structure is destroyed, 
it loses its ability to breathe because it lost the things that breathe. That's what is the, those that are able, right? We have this whole idea that the biology is actually not important at all because over the last 60 to 80 years, we've gone through a whole understanding that has shifted from nature to chemicals back to nature. You can go online and have more YouTube, more websites, more white papers or research done right now on regenerative agriculture. And I find it funny because even within that community, they don't even know how to define regenerative agriculture because it's literally the same and yet different for everybody. Oh, you mean it's context dependent? Yes. They're in a place of regeneration because it's truly about recovery. We're recovering agriculture, right? We're going through our own recovery process of being glyphosateaholics and transitioning to something that actually creates our own peace and peace on the land. If we don't allow it to survive our watering, then we'll also never have enough water because there's not the things there to drink it, okay? And at that point, it's always trying to just get water-soluble nutrition in, which is what most people do, right? They're putting that in as a chemical, as a fertilizer, as a salt-based, which is why a lot of places, they have alkaline soils, because for 60 to 80 years, they've been putting salt in chemical form on their land. Well, makes perfect sense. The nice part about it is the biology will take that and utilize that, and so it's gonna be okay too. You see what I mean? It's like, don't worry, because it actually starts as a ground up experience. We actually do grow from below, with the stars being the limits, right? The sky's the limits, but this, it's the stars, okay? So, with the rule of three, we have, hi there. With the rule of three, we have three weeks. What do you think that might be? Three days is water, three weeks would be? What was that? Food, humans, nutrition, right? What is the plant doing to fulfill those needs? Photosynthesis, it's doing that all day long, right? Yep, supplying is the exudase, excellent. The plant has its own understanding of what it's need and is promoting those populations. We understand it based on a calendar, but the plant's like, hey, because of the solar period, I'm going to shift from a reproductive phase or a vegetative phase, growing big and bold, to now I'm going to start making babies. It's a total shift in that biology of that plant. The demands are different, right? It's going to need more phosphorus. Phosphorus is definitely connected to the fungi. But if there's no fungi there, then that becomes the farmer's recipe of, I need to go out there in July, and I need to add this product because this is going to meet the plant's need for this next cycle, right? There's a window to that, though. That's where these three weeks come in. The plant wants it before. The plant is wanting to work with that biology its entire growing season and cycle. Okay. Three months? What do you guys think it is? What was that? It's the same as the growing season for a lot of stuff there. Like a lot of harvest. So with three months, it's about that transition, right? It's either growing season, it goes from spring to summer. Like there's a transition point with that. If you're not prepared for summertime, who feels prepared for spring? Good. We're going to talk later. But who, like, honestly prepared for spring? This is why a lot of people are like, it's spring fever, right? That's like a little sickness even connected to it. So like, we're not prepared at all, but nature still says it's coming, <laughs> right? Like it or not, right? And every place is a little bit different. We were just over on the Central Coast, and it, it feels like summer. It's, it's amazing. Um, you guys, feel free to come on and have a seat. You, you want chairs? I'll grab them. I'm good. I don't know how long I can. Okay. All right.
appreciate it. With three weeks, we transition to three months. Three months, we go into three years. The uh, organic certification says it takes three years. Anybody here organically certified? Excellent. Yeah. All right. That process is because it actually takes Mother Nature cycles and systems to work with. So even if it's been three years for us, we have a situation that that process has only taken place three times, right? To go through that spring, summer, fall, winter, going through a complete cycle, right? Three decades, it shifts over to our communities and families, right? Three centuries we talked about is the much larger picture of um, unto the seventh generation, okay? And the soil is dead for three years, three years still doesn't get it. I agree. And this is because, and even 20 years. Are you guys familiar with the CRP program? It's what pays farmers to leave their land fallow, right? Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, a lot of those programs don't allow them to do anything to it. They just want to leave it alone. And so they get a check every month. And they'll do that for 20 years, and the land's worse off. Especially in places where it's dry and they don't get any irrigation. Mm -hmm. And there's millions of acres in CRP land. In Texas, there's a, just a tremendous amount. I've worked with several people in it's Texas. Because they don't put chemicals on it. You see what I mean? It's... A lot of this stuff is a, a shift of terms, like this straight-up Tower of Babel, like, confusion. I worked with one gentleman for six months, and we were talking about mulch. And he's like, yeah, I do that all the time. And it wasn't until I'm on his property working with him and understanding his tools that he meant tillage. Because the name of the tillage equipment is called a mulcher. At which point, he does it all the time. <laughs> total opposite ends of the spectrum of what is supposed to be happening. Ah, right? We use the same word, totally different meanings, okay? That's why some of this isn't about the words, it's about the understanding of the meaning. So at that point you go, I don't even care what is the label on it, it doesn't help me. It's doing the opposite of what I'm actually intending. With the rule of three and a survival perspective, we have fight, flight, and fright. You don't have to say it, but there's a lot of people that actually are in that position where if they're thinking about selling the farm, that's flight, right? If you're frustrated and nobody wants to hang out with you because you haven't had enough tractor therapy, like we were talking about that, right? Then there's the fight. And the fright is really not even knowing if you're doing it right. The reason why it takes more than three years is because some of the biology that we're waiting for blows in, flies through the air, lands on a tree. It takes a couple seasons for it to like, OK, it's a safe environment here, starts to spread. By that time, we've already sprayed poison on it a dozen times. I was with a table grape producer in uh, Southern California last week. He, ex he understands the biology. He actually really, on point, understands that that's what his roots need. And then he explained to me that he starts a poisoning cycle that is more than three months long. Every week, spring, tonnage of fungicides in particular, right? That's the neural network of the planet. You know, that's what spreads nutrition and information. The little bacteria, it requires a pathway. That's why the beneficial fungi are like straws. It goes right through and to the root. At which point, the plant has something to work with because it has access. Just like the ABCs of, of CPR, the first A is access. Or the A is access. This is my walking stick, the rule of I. I could 
poke a hole right through this carpet and start digging a hole in the concrete, honestly, right? Does a hundred different things for me. And I've had four major back surgeries and it really is good at stretching too and some <laughs> working stuff out. This will tell you so much, but you can't use it if you're driving through your land. You have to walk the land. And if you have the right tool when you walk the land, every step you take will do what? Give you information. What was that? Massage. Or, you know. I like a massage. Yeah, it's a little massage. I think more of that with the feet. But yeah, this is more acupuncture, right? Okay. I like, okay. What? That, yeah. Data input. It's information. You, you are the observer. You are the observation tool. We have a whole sensory suite, right? If you don't have any birds, how do you know? what well, you can see a lack of them, or you can hear a lack of them. Or depending on where your car is parked, you'll have other indicators, right? The whole point of this is that as we go out and interact with our land, we have to be equipped or we're ill-equipped. And if we're ill-equipped, our land is ill. Plants do not get diseases. They have deficiencies. They're plants. It's what they do, right? People are at dis-ease. That's why we're ill-equipped. The whole point of this is to understand that nature is equipped to take care of this so that we can um, be a little easier on our backs as well. If you don't want to use a walking stick like this, this is the next be best thing. <laughs> right? I was looking at that, you guys know the American Gothic picture? Mm -hmm. An old couple who've been living with how many great-great-grandchildren do those people have? We don't know. It's just the two of them in the picture, right? And he's not holding one of these, but I know he has one, right? He's holding one of these. And where is she? Evenly yoked. Okay? In Latin, this is a forca. And we didn't have these for a long time. We just ate with our hands or stabbed something with a knife or, you know, whatever it might be. The forca is the tool that feeds us. That's what the word means. It was then considered dirty to handle the food, at which point it became a bad word. Okay? Okay. I can take this tool and I can walk. It's really great on hills. I can walk and I do a step. Whew, tells me tons of information. If the ground, I'm about 200 pounds. If the ground is more than 200 PSI, and you can buy a nice penetrometer, push it down, see the little knit, needle wiggle, right? If I go like this and it doesn't go down, what does that tell me? That's exactly right, 100%. So you guess what we do? Just like with CPR, we have to create access. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you go like this. Right? That's the pump. Right? When we create access, we now have, even on a microscopic level, little fractures and openings, but it hasn't been tilled. It's been cultivated, nurtured. And I found it absolutely amazing that the only quote in here, which is not even the Bible verse for this conference, it says, the cultivation of the land will bring a special blessing to the workers. If this was a shovel, it's a guillotine. Those worms that we're trying to grow, we just cut them in half. Right? This opens access. This, 
you'll notice it's kind of funny because we have step one, two steps. They have one called a, a hay fork, which is three, right? Four, five. It's progression. It's, they're literally step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. This is called a what? Pitchfork. Anybody here know how to sing? That's relative. Well, we're going to go with some relatives. So, these are tuning forks. They're tuning you into your land. You can hit it on the side. It'll make a vibration and sound, right? But it's really tuning you in, getting you all that information. It literally is giving you all this information, but if you don't do it, you lose it. Bzzz, right? Driving down, driving down. None of that information is gained, and every step that you take is not making them it better. Right? This being a pitchfork also allows us to pitch in. Which means what? Yep. And so when we have a compost, I call it a pillar, because a pile is a mess you have to clean up, right? If we have a compost pillar, what are we composing? We're pitching in. Yep. We're nurturing that ecosystem. If you aren't able to make compost, something's not right because it's about composing our, our dung, right? It's about maneuvering the manure. It's about taking what resources literally are freely given and then utilizing that to nurture the biology which wants to be there but we killed. No judgment. It's just the fact of the matter. And the easiest part about that is, well, we just put it back. If you work at a scale where you're not wanting to do eight different compost pillars, right? Well, then I have, there's recommendations of good companies that actually have biologically alive and active versus most of the stuff people call compost. It's dead. They call that sterilized. If it goes through a sterilization process, including temperature, they killed it. So what are you doing with it? <laughs> right? This is a compost thermometer. The compost thermometer literally just allows you to tell its temperature. We're going back to very simple biology, right? This temperature is based on metabolism. If the metabolism is overwhelmed, gets too hot, that population dies off. At that point, who's left? Everybody utilizing hand sanitizers, it says kills 99.9% .9 of everything. Which ones does it leave alive? Alcohol producing anaerobic bacteria, and they're sterilized. And we are the opposite of that, <laughs> right? So at that point, when we look into our soil ecosystem, we're wanting to see things that are full and vibrant, diverse. We're not even having to know all of their names because the scientists don't even know all of their names. I literally called a lab the other day. I've spent more money in lab testing, making sure the product that I'm bringing to the market is actually healthy, exactly what it says it is, the diversity all nature made. And he literally told me, he's like, nobody even cares. Here's why. I'm going to hand you a list of numbers, and then I'm going to send you an invoice. It's not about the understanding. I've gone down all the rabbit and wormholes, and in that understanding, you go, oh, it's about the form and the function they perform. But a lot of products that are out there is honestly snake oil. And it's kind of funny because I'm thinking of making another product called snake oil just to put it after them, right? <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, if it's a fight, flight, or fright situation, the attitude is survival. 
It's hard to make good decisions at that point. There's an acronym called STOP, S-T-O-P. Is everybody familiar with S-T-O-P? Who's heard that as an acronym before? Can anybody let me know? All right, so I'm glad I'm helping you. <laughs> um, stop. Set. The. Optimal. Okay. Most people at stop, think, observe, plan. Okay. That applies, but this is really our goal, to be able to stand there and understand and be able to look out over our land and to set the optimal path. It may take years, right? But that's okay. Are you planning on going anywhere? Right? If you understand that every step and every season is actually building to your goal, at that point, you've survived years. That means you're already at the next level. Now it's up to decades, right? When we set the optimal path, it's understanding because we're tuned in. It's because we've understood for both ourselves and everything else that's alive. We understand how we're accessing all the biology that's working for us and in our behalf, right? The rule of three is just a memory aid to help everyone here so that as we go out, we go, yeah, that's not going to survive. <laughs> and then potentially change practices. We have a few minutes before we have a small break. I have a bunch of different test tubes. I'm going to hand them to you. Go find something you want to look at. At that point, we're going to simply use observation tools. Here's an example. Anybody hear bird? Like bird watching, right? So... For, for birding, we look out. That would be a beginner's class. Identification. Hey, look, there's a bird, right? It's blue. It's like this, right? The advanced course would be you're just walking and you can hear the sound. And then you know the bird because you've already seen it, right? Pair of binoculars as a farmer, as any form of grower, I also recommend the chest pouch so they're there with you. If you take them, you have one perspective from this way. Flip it over, and it becomes a magnifying glass. And you can look at whatever's on that leaf and get a much larger magnification and understanding. So you've got one tool that you use in two different ways. This only works to a certain level. If you want to see closer, you need a better pair of binoculars. That's what a microscope is. Right? Right now, if I'm looking through here, I look and I go up. We'll imagine it's all dead out there. It's a beautiful place here, but if I'm looking with my binoculars and I can't see anything for 100 yards because it's all dead or 1,000 yards because it's all dead, gives me that information. With a microscope, it doesn't necessarily allow you to see distance. It allows you to see to what depth we've killed it all. The best thing I can do for farmers is literally set my microscope up on my truck tailgate or in their office and have them do every single step. And then they look and they go, dude, it's all dead. Cool. At least we know where we're at. Let's put the life back, right? Or, hey, I've got plenty of bacteria. Cool. Why are you buying more? Hey, can I look at this product? Yes. I don't represent this product. I don't know anything about it. And since I taught you, I can't unshow you what's not there. And they look at something they spent $10,000 on. It's water. Nice label. Really cool label. Says there's 5 billion everything in there. Right here on the label. But when you take a look, it's just water. Now, it might have salts in it, which gives a little bit of stimuli, which then promotes... But it's, it's not what people are paying for. Okay, So, beautiful, healthy ecosystem. We're going to have opportunity to go around, take the break, enjoy the stretch, and then come back here with several different samples 
We will look at them under the microscope. We'll have it plugged into the television as well. So everybody will have a chance to see together. I'm telling you now, I have no idea what we're gonna see because we haven't looked yet. Does that make sense? And so when you are like, oh, this is from this place. This was a healthy place. This was all this information. That's you paralleling the information that you gain as the steward with the perspective gained through having the right tools. Microscope plus pitchfork equals being in tune and confirmation. So here's the test tubes. We've got two minutes before our little break. If you have a question, you can feel free to ask right now and then come back and we will get into... So are you soil? You can get whatever you want. I love this with kids. They're like, can I look at a booger? Yes, you can. <laughs> look at all you laughing because you know the truth. All right. Please come back, though. Just don't take a test tube and run. <laughs> you can. If you have your own soil or breakfast, I... <laughs> No spring fever because all my compost is down. Good man. Yeah. Can we look for dirt? You can look for whatever you want. Two, please. What are you talking about, two? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, everybody gets a test tube. Woo! Thank you. You're welcome. Whoop! Sorry, my bad. You're welcome. Good to see you. Is Lynn here? Good to see you. You doing good? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm recovering. You look like it. I was in a bad accident, so I'm just... You're, you're lifting everything. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were... You're, you're, I thought you went to West Africa. Yeah, West Africa. I arrived on Thursday. I had to actually meet a Friday. You got hurt in Africa? Oh, dear. That's intense. At the end of your recovery, I'm going to be fast. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you. I hope they'll catch up with you. Yeah. Uh, I have questions. Good, Carol. Ask away. Um, I guess. Yes, ma'am. I have a ranch in Oregon mm -hmm. uh, outside of uh, Roseboro. Okay. And there's 45 acres of pasture land. Wonderful. Ranch meaning you're working livestock. Well, no. I just moved there. We bought the land. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Wonderful. Please sit to me. Um, about 20 or 30 years ago, uh -huh. before we bought the land, the landowner stripped one field of the topsoil and okay. used and so to develop a reservoir this or a dam with. Yeah. and created a 4.2 acre lake or reservoir and it's spring fed. So now I would like to convert that soil, that field it's born of a dozen different plots, uh, to be productive. Good. But I don't know. I don't know how much he took off, but it doesn't produce. What's it currently look like? Is it in grass? It's in grass, but it's poor grass. And yeah. the guy that runs the sheep and cattle, he pays the fields, but not that one. Okay. Because it's such poor grass. So I could do cover crops or something. What's your budget? I asked it this way. It depends on how much time or how much money you want to put into it. You could do it this season, right? But it might cost more. Well, but if you want to... Fields, I would leave that one particular field. There's one field that the, uh, the guy that leases the sheep would like to put into uh, New Zealand white clover because mm -hmm. it has more nutrition than the natural uh, pasture grasses. Right. And so I need to convert that one field, which is, I don't know, That would be your cost? Um, he could buy the seed, or I could buy the seed. I have a tractor. Okay. Do you have a seeder? Um, like a, I put it in the ground? Ones. And that's, yeah, that throws it around? Oh, so this is a new place for you? This is a new place for me, but it's been a farm for years, running cattle. Okay. So right now I'm in the stages of 
I got a well. There's no running water on the fields right now. I have a well to develop the ranch house and so forth, which is an old falling down house. We bought it for the land. Right. There's 255 acres, but most of it is in forest, except for 45. Up in Roseburg area? <laughs> it's near 10 mile off the Coos Bay. I just walked by near Roseburg. <laughs> Ten miles from Coos Bay, or is that what? You Ten miles. Uh, it's, there's a place called Ten Mile. Oh, okay. On the road yeah. that goes to Coos Bay. Okay. So it's about twenty miles from downtown. But anyhow, I think I'm going to have to do cover crops to develop these different fields to change the the plant. Yeah. Structure in order to for the sheep, which are a benefit to the ranch, and there were cattle. By benefit, forward. you mean financially? You you guys are well, sharing the profit. We make enough about to pay the electricity for. We have water rights for most of that ag land. Okay. Uh, from a year-round stream, but it pays about enough for electricity to run the pumps, get the water out of the year-round stream, and we have to also develop a gravity flow system from the reservoir to use that water for irrigation. Do you have a lot of elevation change on your land? Uh, the elevation is sufficient to get some from the dam, but not enough pressure to run the, like, rainbirds. Um, do you have a notepad and paper? Sure do. Okay. There's a gentleman named Mark Shepard. <coughs> Excuse me. Mark Shepard. Yeah. He has what's called agroforestry. Yeah. And it's a lot about water usage, a lot about in using your forest land as well as using, you know, in working them together. Really great information. Um, he he's out of Iowa or maybe Indiana, I think. Okay. <clears throat> That'll help understand structure okay. of how to utilize your entire property to nurture that other part of your property. Um, if you are going to ever seed, you want to make sure you're utilizing a really, you can utilize my product, right? But that diversity so that when that seed goes out, it has the biology with it, and then it will spread the biology. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the plant doesn't have the whole toolbox to work with, yeah. the plant's just growing. Yeah. Trying to, anyways. Well, that's, that's the pasture grass right now. Exactly. But and it's not nutritious enough for his needs. Right. And it's just not as productive. Okay. Well, thank you for your question. I mean, I, you can give me a call and we can work on some other details, but the truth is is that if you need to add or establish the biology back into that, you're going to have to purchase a product okay. or put in the time to create yeah. the biology that exists. It's there. It's just needing to be to, yeah, nurtured, <coughs> cultivated. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll write his name down. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's got a great book and um, good guy, you know. Okay. So, I'll write it down. Cool. Ronald? I will, not a problem. Well, sir. Good to um, see you. Ask away. Communication system? Uh, in the soil. In the soil. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, connect. Indian what? Indian pipe. That's the flower that is. Uh, that has no chlorophyll. chlorophyll. Totally uh -huh. fungal sugars flowed yeah. from the No, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And, and, um, <laughs> yes. So, so I, I, I you got to keep it. So I know what it is. <laughs> Sorry. Thought of it in, in relationship to the communication system. Yeah. And, and so, that's so the biology, which we'll talk about here in a second, has what's called a quorum. Um, and and I'll tell everybody, but it, it's yeah. part of that communication synthesis that, right. that goes through. Yeah. And, and when in, in like our Western forestry they go through and they spread it and then they replant them. Yeah, but then it becomes monocropped, and then, yeah, it's totally different. But left alone, left alone, it's, 
it goes to its successive. Uh, um, uh, it's called su yeah succession. Yep. Yep. Um, and I, as a kid, we watched an uh, old daffodil field go to Scotch Broom. Oh, nice. And yeah. Then, and then after that nitrogen fixer done its job, it went to Alder. Yep. And now I'm starting to see the... Woody brush, and then it goes into... Yep, 100%. And, I, and, and it struck me as you were presenting today. That's what you're seeing. And that's what I'm seeing is the communication system, the quorum yeah. of the soil saying... We're at this level. And now we can move on to the next. That's exactly what it is. 